All right, all right, everybody, what's up? So this is gonna be just a quick explainer on how exactly the prim algorithm works and how we can do rooms and what the different room possibilities are. So the way that it goes right now is that basically the way the algorithm works is that it works, but that it walks between nodes. So you can have nodes in different arrangements and all that the algorithm does is that it chooses a way of, just, of, of, the, of taking a step to another node and then walking through to make a path, right? So there's different um, arrangements of the nodes we can do to make different layouts. Um, as far as trying to make something that autogens, that uses the best use of space, as well as uh, continuity um, in the instance where you don't have like weird dead ends and everything else, right? Um, what I ended up going with was this grid system. The grid system basically puts the nodes inside of a static grid across the map, across the entire map. And then it uses these nodes to generate in between them. Um, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to focus on non-cave-like um, maps, since that's going to be the main one with the rooms in it. A uh, cave-like, it, it randomizes this grid. So we're not going to worry about that right now. Basically, what's happening um, is that it'll go through, and then it'll choose a path through the nodes. So I'm just going to do a quick little example. Something like this and then what it does is that it actually um takes this path increases it to a certain width based off of your path width so the idea is that the path width generates outward from the middle line so if this right here is my middle row of cells right that's um that's connecting my uh, my nodes then the path width is going to extend on both sides of that middle line. You end up something like this. And this is how we end up with our characteristic shapes. Now right here, um, basically, uh, what I did is that I chose to use the space in between. So um, one method of rooms, like, so, okay, let's just talk about what we have right now. The current method for doing rooms is looking at the space in between. So if you think of everything in here as being the path, what I was trying to do is trying to figure out a way of, of filling up the map as much as possible. So instead of using um, like uh, nodes, like rooms on the end of nodes, I ended up just using the negative space in between. So this is why with the current layout, it's very, very formulaic on the shape of the rooms and the size of the rooms, because it all depends on how the path was laid out inside of it. It's all mathematically sound to where it won't cross over with each other and it won't cause um, you know things to break through walls and whatnot, right? So this is how I currently have it set up. Um, basically, the idea is that I just went through and I um, cataloged the different types of rooms that can spawn inside of this negative space. And then I assigned each different room with a scanning algorithm. And then I have it to where you can plop down a map lot inside of each room based off of what the scan came up with, right? So it's able to identify what type of room it is and then plop down the room inside of there to fill in the space in between the hallways, right? So this is the first type of room. This is the kind of the room in between hallway room. The next type of room is one of the things that I did earlier. Uh, this right here is a little bit more on what y'all are talking about. The idea would be more of a less to where instead of doing a static um, grid pattern, um, was, oh, actually, so let me talk about another thing. So. This right here would be a way of doing solid rooms. This is the third type of room that can exist inside of the grid. Um, I'm all over the place. But anyway, okay, so basically what we're going to do is, um, so this would be another grid. And what I can do is that I can actually define shapes inside of the labyrinth depth to, ex to exclude certain nodes at a certain regions. So for example, like right here, what I could do is I can exclude this node from this spot right here, or let's say I exclude both of these nodes. So whenever it does its walk, it may end up doing something um, like this, where it won't go to this region. And because I know that this region is open, so right here it would then expand to a tall length or to a tall width. <coughs> Let's 
here. So now that we would have the hallway through there, then just like before, I would be able to scan and pick out certain rooms. But this large, awkward size room, I would be able to, I would know that this space is open because those two nodes, right? So this would be the one node, this would be the other node. I know that those two nodes are not there. So therefore, I know that these two grid spaces should be open, right? Where there shouldn't be any room spawned inside of there. So therefore, what I can do is that I can now place a pre-made room into that slot and have this node right here. So you put another node. So basically, I would plop a lot right here, and then I put another node inside of it and then let it connect to, to the closest one inward. It's like that it would connect to it. Uh, this right here has a lot more problems as far as trying to make it work. Um, obviously, this takes a little bit more planning, and there's a lot more chances of there being weird, um, you know, weird uh, hall breaches and um, continuity errors and stuff like that. And also, it apparently it appears to take longer for the algorithm. Apparently, the algorithm enjoys being able to choose how it wants to go. Because whenever I do it to where it's trying to search its way through little uh, crevices and bottlenecks, it seems to take longer to uh, to go through and, and um, to generate. All right. So um, so something else would be uh, earlier. I was doing non gridded generations. Now this is not um, very um, efficient for space use. But for example, let's just say I do something with four nodes. Then what I can do is that I can actually generate the paths between the nodes. So let's say we just end up with something like this. And then I can actually generate rooms around each node. And then I can choose what type of hallway I want to have. So for example, um, right here, I could have a hallway that does something like this, right? Where first it goes in the X and then, I mean, yeah, first it covers half of the X and then halfway it jumps up in the Z and then covers the rest of the X. Um, there, there's a bunch of different ways that I could do it. Or like, or let's say if it was going diagonal, let's say like it was going from here to here. Then I'd end up doing something like this, or cross over and come up, right? And then this one right here could cross through. So basically, the, this is another way of doing it. And this right here will lead to a little bit more like what y'all have been asking for, where you have the rooms at the end of hallways that are connected to other rooms that are end of all, uh, or at the end of other hallways, stuff like that. Uh, now, once again, this right here, you end up with a lot of dead use of space. And also because of the way that it's generating, it's it's hard to mathematically isolate a lot of that dead space. So it's hard to use. The reason why this grid pattern down here is, is um, ideal is because it's very mathematically um, so, um, uh, symmetrical. So therefore, I can use that symmetry to identify the rooms inside of the labyrinth and actually make them work the way they do. So yes, so there are other ways of putting rooms into these things. Um, they're a bit more complicated than what we have. The current method is, um, I personally think, is the best method as far as like checking all the boxes. But obviously, to do different flavors of, um, of dungeons and stuff, uh, we have to explore different methods of generating them. Um, this method down here with cutting out and putting in a room, technically, this is doable with everything that's in there. You'd have to use the map lots a little bit more. But um, so basically it'd be like um, how I did Tristram where I'd spawn in a lot right inside of here and do this as a, um, as a dungeon. So, um, so it's doable, but it'd be very complicated. Um, as of right now, what's, what's easily done inside the defs is going to be this style of thing, right? Where it's, it, you're just basically working with the rooms in between and we're going from there. Uh, something else that I can try working on, but it'll make cause problems would be to try to put rooms around the nodes in here. The problem with uh, doing that is that it starts cutting into the rooms between the hallways, right? In which case you end up with more dead space. I don't know, maybe, maybe I, or even maybe I can do a combination of the two. Like I said, I'm going to play around with it, but um, just to kind of bring y'all up to speed on what exactly the state of the technology is and what it's doing and what we can do with it. So hopefully this helps um, inspire some good ideas. And um, if you can think of good ways of doing the node generations, then let me know too. All right, later.